This is how we build a freeze dryer from start to finish. The welding process as well as the copper wrapping process took place previously. This is actually how we pour foam around the machine. And this foam allows the cooling system to not get so cold that it will condensate ice. It also helps insulate the pot just that way it doesn't transfer heat from the outside to the inside of the pot. This is a two part polyurethane foam mix. And we like to pour it in layers like this, just that way it forms a little bit better of a finish. This jig here is actually Teflon coated, which makes the demolding process quite a bit easier. We go ahead and let it set up for about 10 minutes. And after that, it's done and ready to come out of the mold. There's another company out there that's actually wrapping their copper in just essentially a foam sheet. And that can cause some huge problems because if there's not an airtight seal, you will have ice forming on these copper lines. The foam itself also helps to keep everything on the pot, like sensors and the copper itself. And because we pour it in place, it actually forms an airtight seal around the copper. After we get the foam all done, we need to build the frame. These frames are modular, which make it really nice in case one of the panels gets damaged in shipping. We can just go ahead and ship out just one of the panels by itself. The frames are also strong enough to park a truck on top of, which is a huge bonus. After the frame is done, we need to go ahead and clean up the pot just a little bit more to make sure that it's going to fit nicely and that it looks nice. With the pot cleaned up, we will go ahead and marry it to the frame and the refrigeration system so that way it actually kind of starts looking like a freeze dryer. Building it from the ground up like this allows us to control our quality quite a bit better than other brands that just simply import them from China. If we notice an issue on the customer service side, we can immediately take it back down to the manufacturing line and we can address that issue usually within the same day. So now we have the refrigeration system, the pot and the frame married together and we are ready for the front panel. Another bonus about having a modular design is that if you ever get tired of the color, you can change the color in the field pretty easily. From start to finish, it takes about two days to finish one freeze dryer. We follow the Toyota method of quality must come first. And our philosophy is that if we can take care of quality, then customer service will be a lot easier down the road. Once we're done at this station, we'll take it over to electrical to go ahead and get wired up. We've tried to design these machines with the customer in mind. And part of that comes down to how we assemble them and how easy it is for us to put them together. But that also translates to how easy it is for the customer to be able to change something out. If heaven forbid something does go wrong on it, we want it to be up and running as quickly as possible. So we want to use parts that are easy for anybody to understand and anybody can either put it together or do maintenance on it. There are other brands of freeze dryers out there that have a ton of wires just going everywhere. So what we did is we tried to simplify that by putting as many of the circuits on the circuit boards themselves. So if something does fail on the circuit board side, you can just replace the circuit boards and you're not chasing wires all over the machine. Once we're done here at the electrical station, the machine will turn on, but it's not quite functional yet because we still need the refrigeration system to be plugged in. The refrigeration station is arguably one of the most important stations because this will determine how cold the machine can get. The refrigeration system needs to get really cold and that coldness needs to be consistent across thousands of machines. One big difference that we do that our competitors don't is we actually remove the Schrader valve off of the refrigeration system. All Schrader valves leak, period, full stop. There is not a single Schrader valve that is in existence that does not leak. So keeping that Schrader valve on will cause issues with leaking refrigeration out. We're gonna back up a little bit and we're gonna show the assembly of the tray rack. We use food grade silicone for the heating pads as well as the mats that actually come in contact with the food. The bottom tray of the heat rack is actually a higher wattage heating pad. The bottom heat pad is in contact with the cold refrigeration system. So we went with a higher wattage heating pad just to help overcome some of this coldness. As a fun fact, you can actually freeze dry at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, which I think is pretty interesting. Another thing that we've added is this fan in the back of the heat rack to help circulate both cold and hot air. The fan obviously doesn't work under vacuum, but it does help to circulate both the cold air during the refrigeration cycle and the hot air during the defrost cycle. One thing we are very meticulous on is our quality checks. For example, Mark is going to go ahead and assemble and test this tray rack. And then Brian is going to go ahead and do a secondary test on it to make sure that it all works. And we use this method on every step of the process where one person builds something and tests it and the next person in line will go ahead and verify the test. This way, we've always got two sets of eyes on everything. And if there are any issues, then the second person will go ahead and catch it. And now that this tray rack is ready, the machine is off to final assembly and we do all the little parts and pieces in this station, including this logo. At the final assembly station here, we are just getting on all the side panels and make sure that everything is plugged in and just ready to go to the quality control station. 
We also want to make sure to clean out everything that might have fallen down inside of the machine. We don't just say that we take quality control seriously, we really do have to live by that because when it comes to freeze drying, if you have a hole even the size of a human hair, it will cause such a big leak that you will never be able to get in a vacuum and you'll never be able to freeze dry. The inside of the vacuum chamber really does need to get down to the vacuum of space and again, if there is any kind of leak at all, it will cause a huge problem down the road. We don't really show the full test here because it'd be pretty boring just watching the machine just sit there for hours, but we do about four and a half hours of testing before we send a machine off to packaging. Now that the machine is ready for packaging, we'll go ahead and install things like these orange zip ties that do need to be removed after it arrives. They're just there to help prevent the tray rack from rotating during shipping. Packaging is pretty important because freight drivers are not exactly the most gentle on items like this. So we wanna make sure to get it right and make sure that the package is protected. In one instance, we actually had a freeze dryer show up upside down and it was pretty impressive to see how it ended up that way. But because of the packaging and because of the strong frame, the freeze dryer actually survived. Luckily, this only happened once, but it is a testament to how strong these things are. After we get it all packed up, it is onto a truck and off to its new home. The next step after it arrives is setting up the freeze dryer, and I have a whole video on how to do that. So if you're interested, go ahead and check it out. Thanks for watching.